Hi everybody. Um, okay, for the video today, we're going to be talking about using your degree works. Uh, degree works is a system that you can use to see what classes you need to take, uh, what you've done, uh, what you have in progress, and how it all fits into your degree. Um, we use this if you are unable to get in to see an academic advisor. Uh, financial aid also uses it to make sure you're taking classes that are in your major. Um, so it's a useful system to see how uh, your classes fit into your major and how close you are to uh, graduation. Um, to get into DegreeWorks, the easiest way to do it is through your CUNY First account. Uh, so what you would do is you would go to the CUNY First homepage, you would log in, again the username is first name dot last name and the last two digits of your student ID number. Password is uh, whatever you would have set it to be, would have to have at least one capital letter and at least one number. And it's also the same as your login for your Blackboard. When you log in, uh, you're going to see this menu on the uh, top left hand side. You're going to click on the option that says Student Center. Student Center is where you go to uh, access most of your TD First things. And when you click on the Student Center, it will bring you to this screen, uh, which will show you what classes you're taking, your financial aid, your semester bill. Um, we have another video which is going to go into CUNY First and registration a little more, uh, and it'll talk a little more about what you see here on the Student Center. For today, what we would want to access is DegreeWorks, okay? And DegreeWorks, you'll see it's on the bottom uh, right-hand side. I've circled it in this screenshot here uh, in the um, menu that says Advisement and Transcript. Uh, it's the second option there, okay, Degree Works Online Advisement. And when you click that, it will open up a screen that looks like this. And as I said, your Degree Works uh, is the system that you can use to see what you've uh, done, what you've got in progress, and what you still have to do. So, um, how do you read this? So, you'll see at the top you have uh, your student ID number, your name. Uh, the type of degree you're going for, either it's an AA or an AS or an AAS. Um, it's all an associate's degree, though. Your major, um, about how far you are in it, uh, so uh, and when the last audit was. Um, anything in here that you've done already, completed, will have a green check uh, in box. Anything that you've got that's in progress um, will be... Uh, the box will be blue and it'll have like a little squiggly line in it. And anything that you haven't done yet is uh, in a, um, is going to have a red box. And you can see the legend there that kind of tells you. Um, it'll tell you if you're in good academic standing or poor academic standing, your GPA. In order to be in good academic standing, you have to have a 2.0 GPA. So as long as you're above a 2.0, that's good. Uh, it'll tell you the number of credits you have. Okay, applied towards your degree and how many you need. Uh, most associate degrees need 60 credits in order to graduate. Um, and at least 30 of them have to be taken uh, at Kingsborough. Okay. Um, if we scroll down a little bit, um, it'll go into the degree requirements. Okay, so uh, everybody in the college, regardless of major has to take a writing intensive course. It's called Writing Across the Curriculum. Uh, that's a course where the professor has undergone special training to make sure there's a lot of writing in the course. And uh, if you watch the CUNY First video, I'll show you how to search that. Okay. Um, everybody has to take a civic engagement course. Uh, that's a course where the subject has to do with the community. There are some majors where those are built in, such as, um, for example, mental health, um, there are a lot of civic engagement courses built into that. Um, liberal arts has those built in. Uh, business has those built in. Other majors, you have to be a little more strategic about uh, picking those those classes. Okay. Um, a common one is um, sociology 31. Uh, that's a, a requirement. Also a requirement for nursing and mental health and a few others. Um, as far as uh, courses required, you see in the middle of the screen here where it says general education pathways required for. Um, those are required courses that everybody in CUNY, regardless of major, has to take two English classes, a math, and a science course. Okay. 
And at Kingsborough, the two English classes that everybody has to take are English 12 and English 24. Um, if you look next to where it says Math and Quantitative Reasoning and Life and Physical Sciences, it actually lists a whole bunch of different math courses and science courses that would satisfy that requirement. Some majors, they're going to require that you take specific courses to satisfy those requirements. So, for example, for the biology major, um, for the math and quantitative reasoning, they want you to take uh, math nine to satisfy that requirement. And for the life and physical sciences requirement, they want you to take uh, bio 13. OK, but um, for other majors, they're a little more flexible in terms of the um, courses that you could take to satisfy those requirements, okay? Um, underneath that, you would see what says General Education Pathways Flexible. This is uh, some general education classes. So regardless of major, everybody has to take some gen ed courses. This would be things like history or speech or political science or um, psychology or sociology, you know, those kinds of general education the way it works, if your degree at the top where it says degree says AA or AS, you will have to take six classes in the flexible core, one in each group, and then one additional one in any of the groups. And you can see for this example student, um, she's done four of the uh, flexible core classes already. For the two that she hasn't done, individual and society and scientific world, it lists literally every course that falls into those those groups so you, she can kind of pick those out from that okay underneath that is the major requirements so uh, this is a graphic design major that um, I'm using as this example and she's um, got where it says graphic design and illustration those are the degree requirements for her specific major okay so everybody in the graphic design major has to take design drawing illustration type uh, experimental typography, digital illustration, Photoshop, um, you know, various other kinds of uh, courses like that. If your major is not graphic design, you would have different things there. So criminal justice majors would have criminal justice courses there. Business majors would have business courses. Biology majors would have biology courses. Nursing majors will have nursing courses, etc. cetera. Um, so that's what's different between the, um, uh, the major requirements okay and underneath that you'll see the sub plan some majors have different concentrations uh, so for example uh, this graphic design major has two concentrations general and animation and uh, they have slightly different requirements depending on which concentration you're in so this student is in the animation concentration so there are three courses that she has to take that would uh, satisfy the animation requirement if she were in the other concentration, there would be different things. Okay. Um, there are a number of majors that have different concentrations, liberal arts, uh, bio, um, you know, a couple others. Uh, so there are a number of different majors that have different concentrations. Okay. And underneath that, you'd find the electives. And um, electives are not the same as the general education general education courses everybody has to take some of them okay sometimes students think that they're electives but they're not they're requirements in your major but an elective is is in order to graduate you have to have 60 credits okay and if you add up the requirements the required core the flexible core and the degree requirements in some majors it doesn't add up to 60 okay in liberal arts i think it adds up to 45 credits in um, bio, I think it adds up to 52 credits, okay? The electives are, are the extra credits to get to 60, because remember, everybody has to have 60 credits in order to graduate. So um, what that is, is basically it's a, you can take any course to get to the total of credits. We usually recommend that you try to uh, save those towards the end of the, uh, the degree so that you have some wiggle room in terms of your uh, courses at the end of your degree. But also try to save those for things that you would be either interested in taking, uh, but they're not, they don't fit into your major. So maybe, for example, you took a psychology class in the flexible core and you want to take a second psychology course that doesn't fit into your major. You can use that uh, elective space to take that second psychology. Or if you're going towards a 
a specific type of program that has some entry requirements. Uh, for example, if you're looking to go into a um, physician assistant program, for example, they may require that you take a extra math course that's not required in your uh, major. Um, so you can use the electives to do that. Okay. Um, now, that's how to see what your major requirements are if you are going to stay in the same major. But what if you want to change your major? And that's something that happens uh, a lot of a lot of the time. You know, students uh, come in, they think they're going to do one thing, and then they discover, you know, either they really are passionate about something else, or they discover that they really don't like the thing that they thought they wanted to do, and that's totally fine. Um, lots and lots and lots of students have that happen. I had that happen when I was in college. You know, uh, you go in, you start, um, you think you're going to do one thing, and you decide you want to uh, do something else as you as you go. So you change your major. Um, and so DegreeWorks also has a system to allow you to see what it would look like if you changed your major, what the new requirements would be, okay? And how well what you've taken would fit into the new major. So what you would do is you would click on the left-hand side, there's a menu, that, uh, and you would click on what if, okay? And if you click on that, it'll bring you to a screen that looks like this, okay? Um, for the what if, where it says the catalog year, you want to set it to the current school year, okay? So I'm recording this in spring of 2020, so we would be setting that to 2019-2020. Next semester, we would be setting that to 2020-21, because that would be the fall 2020, spring 2021. Um, the major, you select the major, and again, you have to pick the catalog year, so uh, again, 2020-2021 or whatnot, and, um, or 2019-2020. Um, and then you also need to set the concentration. Like I said, some majors have different concentrations okay. uh, and the catalog here. And you'll see it's it'll populate that chosen areas of study. It'll start filling that in there. Then you click Process What If. Okay, and you see it'll bring us to another screen that looks just like degree work audit that we had done prior to that. But we know it's a what if because on the left hand side of the menu the what if is still selected. Okay. Um, and so it still has uh, new student information, but now it's looking at it as if it were uh, as if the student were a liberal arts major. So that's what I had set the what if to look at. What if she changed from a graphic design major to a liberal arts major? And you'll see some of the things that she did as a graphic design major still satisfy requirements in the liberal arts major, okay? So uh, it's not like when you change your major, you have to start totally over, okay? Some things that you've done will go into the new major, okay? Um, so, for example, she's got the GPA requirement, she's met the civic engagement requirement, uh, etc. cetera. Um, if we scroll down, uh, you'll see that her general education Pathways courses are still filled in. Um, one interesting thing is for some majors, they allow you to do what's called double dipping. Okay. So, for example, if we look at the literature course, okay, that she took, English 3000, um, you'll see that it's being counted in the flexible core uh, as the additional course from group A through E. But Literature is also a required course for liberal arts, okay? So they're using that in both places. So if you go to see it, the subplan for liberal arts general, uh, the literature box is checked and the same course is being counted. For a liberal arts major, you can double dip four times, okay? So four classes that you take in your liberal arts requirements will automatically count for a uh, flexible core. In different majors, they uh, double dip in different ways. So, for example, in the bio major, they, they require that you take uh, pre-calculus and gen bio 2, and those are automatically put into the flexible core. Um, but they don't double dip any of the other the other groups. Okay. Um, so yeah, that's basically degree audit uh, or degree works. Um, again, it's a system that you can use to uh, see what classes you've taken and what you need to, to do. It's not perfect. It's not a substitute for seeing an academic advisor. 
Um, so you still want to make appointments with your academic advisor to uh, go over things and plan out stuff because sometimes degree works is not completely accurate, but uh, it is a good tool that you can use in the, um, in the meantime. All right, I uh, hope that was helpful.